Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 10 of my KSP campaign. In the last episode, we ended up spending the entire time just talking about design and testing vehicles. So I think we'd be best served for the start of this episode to time warp straight into a mission that is actually trying to fulfill a particular contract. So here we have the Otter 1 picking up a crew report over the grasslands that are to the west of the KSC. And then it comes time to uh, put this thing down on the surface and pick up an EVA. And I know that it's kind of hidden in the clouds, but I'm a little nervous about these guys because they look to be very much in those mountains that you see there. But you never know. Like, m maybe it's on the surface in the highlands and I can kind of land in there. Or maybe it's just on the edge of the mountains and I can find, you know, a relatively flat spot to put this plane down and then kind of drive up the mountain to where the waypoints are. But, uh, oh. Oh, no, no. No, I do not like the look of this. Oh, this is not encouraging. Okay, well, uh, I'll still go find out where these are. We'll, uh, we'll climb on up there until we get to the point that it tells us that we are entering into the, uh, the correct area. But I gotta be honest, I am liking this less and less and less. And the more I fly, the less I like it. And then, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This isn't gonna work. Uh, I do not see anywhere where it's even remotely possible that I might be able to put this plane down and still be able to get to where these waypoints are. You know, I used to wonder whether these uh, waypoints on the surface were generated randomly or whether, you know, they were specifically placed there. And I think I have my answer because unless there is some really, really cruel person working at Squad, I am going to have to assume that this waypoint was just generated randomly and just happened to be in the middle of this mountain range. Well, there's just no way to do it. There's just no way that this plane is going to uh, be able to be to put down anywhere near here. So I'm going to have to scoot on back and see if I cannot uh, design something that perhaps might be able to get down in here. So I built myself a VTOL. And before we take this thing off the ground. Let's take a look inside the new inline cockpit. Uh, this interior looks really nice. I wish the other stock interiors looked as nice as this, but notice how the nav balls messed up. It, it's not working right. Um, and I have uninstalled the raster prop monitor mod for now, um, but that nav ball, the, the textures on it are still messed up, and that's a stock thing. So something has messed up the textures. It has nothing to do with uh, raster prop monitor, but what I've decided to do is uh, there is a patch for KSP coming out pretty soon, uh, 1.03, and what I've decided to do is I'm going to wait for that patch to come out, and then I'm going to uh, reinstall everything from scratch, obviously backing up my saves at the same time. And hopefully that will get everything working on the inside in those interiors as much as I can. Anyway, a VTOL. A VTOL is a vertical takeoff and landing. That's what the VTOL stands for. And I am probably the last person you'll want to hear as far as advice on these things. I am terrible at flying them. I really am. I try to avoid them. Um, when you're playing in a career mode, they are probably one of the more dangerous crafts that you can build. And so, you know, if you're playing with reverts and stuff and, and saving and all of that, then it's fine. You know, you, if it takes you six tries to finally land one, that's fantastic. But I'm not going to play that way. Now, right here, I'm in sim mode. So if I crash, that's perfectly, you know, uh, that's fine. But when I go to do this mission for real, um, I'm not going to be in sim mode. Anyway, I will give what little advice I can when it comes to building these things. And the big thing is symmetry. You want to have the center of thrust and the center of mass right on top of each other, or at least lined up. That's the better word for it. And uh, and as well, the center of lift needs to be in there as well. And so when you're in the VAB, make sure all those things are nicely lined up. And the easiest way to get that to happen is to build everything symmetrically. Because remember, as you burn your fuel, right, 
the uh, you will be losing mass and you don't want that center of mass to start to move around so what I did is I put these fuel tanks all on perfectly symmetrically so that uh, as it burns fuel that center of mass will stay right in the same spot um, so it's pretty stable as you can see I'm flying along at a pretty uh, pretty decent uh, decent rate here it works perfectly it works perfectly fine the issue is going to be the landing now the only landing gear I have uh, and, and besides the landing gear that will go on planes but uh, as far as deployable landing gear are those really really thin ones which I know will simply break upon landing so my idea here is just to land right on the engines and if the engines blow up the engines blow up I don't care I just want to get to the waypoint get my EVA and then recover Jeb from the mountains if that costs me a bit of money I don't care I just want to finish off the contract and I put on four parachutes as you can see to uh, to aid in the landing because I do not trust my ability to do a powered landing with this thing and I am now discovering I got a bit of a problem I cannot pitch up if you take a look at the pitch indicator over there on the left uh, it is full up and it is not pitching up so I have throttled up to try and sort of gain some altitude uh, a higher altitude gives you more safety <laughs> there's safety in height um, and I'm trying to get myself up I'm into the right area now and I don't even care all I want to do is see if there's any way I can get this down without completely killing Jeb and I without being able to pitch up I can't thrust in the opposite direction to try and arrest my horizontal velocity yeah this is it's no good maybe if I turn Maybe if I turn, I can kind of get myself turning, you know, and uh, and arrest that horizontal. And oh no, 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 oh oh, I'm out of control. I can't do. Okay, parachutes, 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 parachutes. I have no control, and I'm upside down. <laughs> I'm upside down on a mountain, heading for a cliff. Oh my gosh. Oh oh, now I'm okay. Parachutes are fully deployed, and I am completely upside down. Okay, so this design's a little bit sketchy. Uh, I can't turn it over. There's nothing. This thing's gonna hit hit the ground upside down, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And I am on the edge of a cliff. Oh boy. Are you ready, Jeb? I want to remind everybody I am in sim mode, <laughs> so this doesn't count. This is testing. Okay, we are getting close to the side of the cliff here, and oh, 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 Jeb's still here. Oh, Jeb. Oh, yes, this is going to be a heck of a toboggan ride. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. We can do this. We can, no, oh, 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 no, 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 we can't do this. Now, the issue there was reaction wheel torque because the only reaction wheels I had were the ones in the cockpit. So what I have done is added on two additional reaction wheels at the front and the back of the vehicle. And that gives me enough torque now to be able to pitch up, as you can see here, and be able to control my horizontal velocity quite a bit better. Oh, wait. Whoa. Oh, a battery has short-circuited. Oh, oh, that's dang it. That's the dang it mod, telling me that the battery is short-circuited in this jet engine. Oh, I can live with that. It's still producing thrust. Man, if it stopped producing thrust, if that engine kicked out, uh, then I'd really be in trouble. Then this thing would be uh, pretty much out of control, or I'm sure it would be spinning madly. Which reminds me, I haven't put any parachutes on this thing. Maybe that would be a worthwhile addition as well. And by that I mean Vanguard parachutes like what I have on the Otter so that Jeb could, or whoever the pilot is, could potentially bail out. Okay, we are now in the region. I gotta see if I can put this down somewhere. And I'm kind of looking, there seems to be a bit of a plateau up there a little bit to the left. I'll try and see if I can put it up there. Okay, so, gotta get a bit of altitude here. My horizontal velocity is, is under some control, which is good. And again, I'm not going to do a powered landing. I'm going to depend upon my parachutes in order to get this thing to go down. Ah, I'm now leaving. Ah, shoot. I have to be down there, I guess. Okay, forget it. I'm still going to see if I can put this thing down. So, trying to arrest my horizontal velocity. Thrust those parachutes. Come on! What? Whoa! You're, 
dangerous. Uh, ah, you're flipping upside down. Why are you flipping upside down? I don't want you to flip upside down. Oh. Okay, that was completely under control. I don't know why. That was completely out of control. I don't know why I flipped upside down. Well, Jeb survived. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say the heck with this. I mean, clearly, you know what? If I was saving and trying a couple of times, or if I was a better pilot, I could probably pull this off. I could probably... Uh, watch out, Jeb. you got tumbling uh, modular girders coming after you here. There we go. Let's get out of the way. You know, I could probably do this if I was allowing myself to save, but this is just too sketchy of a vehicle. I'm going to give this up. Uh, sorry, Gene. I'm going to cancel this contract. Oh, quiet, Gene. Uh, you know, I don't care. If you don't want me to cancel contracts and don't give me such stupid missions to follow. Oh, but hang on. Check these out. Ferry tourists around. I got these Ferry 4 tourists around and Ferry 3 tourists around. And, I mean, look at this itinerary. We have not only just uh, orbits and suborbits, we also have flybys of the moon and flybys to Minmus. Well, this will keep me busy for a while. And, and here's my thinking, is if I put a probodyne, uh, probodobodyne uh, computer core, probe core, onto my vessel, then I have SAS, whether I have a pilot or not. So I don't need a pilot. That frees up some cabin space. And I can put in Bill or Bob and do some sciency things or get, get uh, Bill to finally some experience, uh, which he will be needing down the road. I'll talk about why you do need engineers down the road. And uh, I can use these missions as well to see if I can get some other things accomplished. So, for instance, if I put Bob in and do a moon flyby and put in the required tourists as well, um, and then I don't need a pilot because I'll put the Probo Dobodyne pr uh, core on it, I can do a flyby the moon. I can collect a ton of science while at the same time knocking off these contracts and getting me some, uh, some cash. And it only takes up one slot on the of the seven for active missions active contracts so i think this is a pretty valuable one so i'm going to scoop up the three tourist one i think that's the one that i'm going to use and you know i'll probably come back to that vtol on a future date um i was thinking if i mounted those parachutes up high perhaps using some modular girders that would keep it from flipping upside down but i think i'll wait as well till i have some proper landing gear so i'm not landing down on the engines so uh yeah i think that thing will probably come back again in the future but it's gonna be on hold for now and i do have a number of things in the building queue some bigger things so um while those things are being built and you'll see them very very shortly uh you know i'll put Bob back out in this little jet-powered science buggy. Um, the only thing that's changed from the last time you saw this thing is that I have added on a thermometer. So uh, Bob is going to sc scoot around the KSC once again, uh, grabbing simply some, uh, mostly to grab temperature scans from the various biomes in around the KSC, but also to scrounge out what's left of the materials-based science and the goo canister science. You've seen me do this before. It's pretty dull, so I'm not going to be spending any more time on it than you have already seen. Nevertheless, that uh, little and almost free mission netted me 43.6 science, which allowed me to unlock another node on the tech tree. And as tempted as I was by space exploration, especially about picking up that barometer, which will allow me to pick up a lot more science, I went instead with aerodynamics. And the main reason being these improved uh, air intakes and airplane parts. I really want to get a plane that will uh, get to an altitude of over 20 kilometers to see if I can do more of those curb and survey missions. Um, as well, it gives me fairings for the first time, so uh, that will help with my unmanned probe missions. And of course, another tech node means another build point for Kerbal construction time, which I once again put towards the second bay in the vehicle assembly building. Trying to get some, I want to start pushing these rockets out more quickly. And while said rockets are in the process of being pushed out, we were able to build the science buggy once again. This time, Bob's targets are the Kerbin Shores and the nearby grasslands. Yep, just picking up again a little bit of science. And uh, I thought, you know, while we are out here, why not visit another one of these nearby Easter eggs? 
just a little bit to the north of the Kerbal Space Center, you will find this little monument and... Ooh, what happened to it? Oh. You know, while this thing was in development, this was a much bigger type of thing, kind of a monolith sort of thing with a nice squad logo on it. And I am not sure if this is a glitch or if this is a deliberate change. Anybody else have any input on this? <laughs> if if you if you know whether this is a glitch or not, or whether this is actually the way it's supposed to look, please uh leave a little bit of a comment down below. But uh, um, Bob Bob's not too impressed. I kind of like the old monolith that used to be here. And with the completion of that mission, we are able to go straight into the next one. This is the Kirkery Four, one of a number of vehicles that I have cooking up in the building queue. Um, and the reason why this guy took so much is because it does, or took quite a bit of time, is because it does have a number of new parts on it, uh, appearing for the first time in an actual built vehicle. One is the radish capsule that you have seen before, but only in testing, and that radish capsule, again, comes from uh, homegrown rockets. That's the mod it comes from, and it's a two-person capsule that, quite frankly, I think should be in the stock game. Um, and that's what's got our two tourists in there, our two tourists not being too impressed with their ride, which seems to be typical now of the tourists. I don't know why they put out so much money only to uh, have their wits scared out of them. And uh, the other new part on this thing are the larger fuel cans that you see on this. So these rockets are starting to take less parts, which is a good thing. That's going to allow me to make them a little bit more uh, sophisticated so you can see for instance this thing has the launch tower on it in case things start to go wrong remember i do have kerbal launch failure attached to this thing so are uh, installed in this particular game so there is a possibility always of that engine failing and needing to uh, get our our turbinots away from the vehicle but anyway, the mission plan is pretty much the same as it's been with a number of these missions, is to get up to about 75 kilometers, detach the ascent stage, detach the launch or the escape tower, and then descend once again, fulfilling the requirements for this particular contract. And here, stage recovery is letting me know that the ascent vehicle has been recovered. Uh, I'm not quite sure. You, you might recall from previous videos that I was having some troubles with recovery. Um, I'm not sure why the stage recovery mod is now kicking in. It's always been installed, so now it's suddenly working. I don't know what the difference is. But anyway, the recovery of these guys went without incident, and I think that's going to have to end this particular video. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.